Archiping is the newest cavalry commander in Rise of Kingdoms, and he is extremely unique, but taking some things from Zhang Yu. So today, I'll be telling you everything you need to know about Archiping. I'll go over active skills, I'll go over pairs, talents, equipment, if he's even worth investing in. So if you are interested in Archiping as a commander, especially if you're a lower spender free to play, and you want to get the most value for your precious gold heads, you need to check out the rest of the video. Now, I've always stated that the most important part of a commander is their skills. And to begin with, we will go over how chapping skills. First of all, you have his active skill, and when max, he deals 2,700 damage factor to a one target. This is not an AoE, thank god it's not an AoE. And he also reduces their march speed by 50% for 3 seconds. Keep in mind, if he is the secondary, the damage factor he is dealing is halved, the debuff does not change. Also, keep in mind, that with Hauche being as the primary, your rage requirement is still going to be a thousand. So it is not increased like Edward of Woodstock's rage requirement for the same damage. It is the same rage requirement just at a crazy high damage factor, which is actually very, very strong. Also keep in mind with March speed reduction, it is nice, but commanders like Saladin, William, even Richard, Boudicca Prime, all these commanders have a March speed reduction on their active skill, if not better or on par with Hauche Bings. I think that Williams is slightly weaker, but still they have March Speed Reduction. So overall, Hauche Bing's active skill March Speed Reduction is nice, but since there is already two Cavalry Commanders who are fairly decent that have March Speed Reductions, it may not be completely applicable to you, especially if you do run a William or a Saladin in the open field. Then his second skill, he gains 40% increased Cavalry Attack, which is really nice. It is actually a lot of permanent attack, so I don't mind that. It is, in this situation, a decent number. And then when outside of Alliance territory, you gain 15% March speed, which is good. A lot of fights happen in between territory or just outside of territory, so you are going to be a little bit quicker. He's also going to deal 5% more damage to Arch units, which is nice since Cavs do want to counter those Archers a lot. And since he is a high skill damage commander, dealing this extra damage, especially to Glass Cannon commanders like Boudicca and Zulang, can definitely be very nice. Then on his third skill, which is probably his more complicated skill, but definitely his strongest skill, if he has not been garrisoned in a building for at least 30 seconds, which means your city, a pass, a flag, I think resource nodes may also count to this, every time he enters combat, he'll gain the following buffs for the first 15 seconds of battle. The first buff, he deals 30% more skill damage, which is actually a really, really high number. And then also, his active skill costs 150 less rage, which is amazing. Zhang Yu's active skill, for example, if you max his fourth skill, is going to cost the same rage as Hao Che Bing's active skill. And Hao Che Bing is dealing the damage of Edward of Woodstock. Edward of Woodstock has an increased rage requirement and makes himself lose rage. Hao Che Bing has a decreased rage requirement, plus he has increased skill damage. So he is an amazing commander overall for just the damage. The damage he's going to be pumping out is crazy high. And since every single time you enter battle for the first 15 seconds, you're going to have a fast rage cycle, he's just going to decimate. You can easily hop from target to target and just drop damage constantly. It is very similar, for example, to Zhu Lang where once you expertise him, you can just go from battle to battle, drop an active skill, and you're going to deal an extra 4,500 AoE. So it is extremely powerful, the amount of damage that he is rocking, especially with the rage reduction. The only thing that is unfortunate, actually there are two things, is first of all, you can't city pop with it. 30 seconds is way too long to pop out of your city and try hit someone. At that point, either you've died or they died. That's pretty much how that would go. So you have to be using him properly in the open field in like a big murder ball. So he's not a good city popping commander. Then in longer 1v1 situations, he's going to lose a lot of his effectiveness. The rage reduction is not permanent. It is not like XY where his rage reduction is permanent. This is a thing that only lasts 15 seconds. And also the 10%, the 30% increased skill damage is also removed once you lose that rage reduction. So after 15 seconds, what happens is you just deal 10% more normal attack. It's an okay buff, but obviously the buffs above that are way, way, way better. So in some situations, you may just want to be able to just hit the opponent, drop an active skill or two, and then just run away. That is pretty much what you should be doing all the time with Hao Bing. He's not a commander for extended engagements. He's not a good rally because of this. So he really just has to be there for a quick hit and a quick run type of commander. Then on his fourth skill, he gains 30% increased defense to all cavalry troops as long as he's attacking an enemy troop. So this does not work on barbarians, barbarian forts but it does work on enemy troops, which is really nice. This should not trigger on a garrison to my knowledge, but it may, I'm not 100% sure there. Though 30% increased defense is really, really good and actually is actually very, very high. He also does deal an extra 20% more skill damage, which once again is extremely good. He now has pretty much a permanent YSG buff. He's similar to YSG with the amount of skill damage buffs he is getting, up to 50% skill damage already, 
though keep in mind like i said his third skill skill damage will actually drop off after 15 seconds but this 20 percent extra on his fourth skill is permanent as long as you are attacking someone then whenever he defeats an enemy troop he heals 1500 healing factor that is actually not bad way to heal healing after combat is okay because you are not fighting the enemies and you can heal those slightly wounded units take them into your next fight so you start with more units this is actually a good amount of healing here for the way it's being used. It's similar to Guan. Guan's healing is not that bad because you don't get it mid-combat. You have to actually defeat someone. Keep in mind though, when you do heal, there is an eight second cooldown. So you can't just spam hit a flag to heal back to max like you could with Guan. You have to actually wait eight seconds. The 1,500 healing factor for killing an enemy troop is pretty decent. And you might enter the next battle with like 10, maybe 15K extra troops, depending on how much this healing factor stacks. Then on his expertise, you're actually improving that fourth skill, Battle Appropriations. And you're increasing your defense to 35% instead of 30%. So whenever you attack an enemy troop, you get 35% increased defense and then 25% more skill damage instead of 20%. Not really 100% needed there. Like it, it's not 100% needed overall. And also he heals 3000 instead of 1500 healing factor now. So overall his expertise is not really needed. And even that fourth skill while being extremely strong is also not 100% needed to his kit. So if you wanted to run Outro Bing to begin with at 5551, which is maxing the first three skills and leaving the fourth skill, it could actually work quite decently. I do think the fourth skill in the end is worth getting purely because of the amount of stats it's giving you, but not necessarily for the expertise. If you did get the expertise, I wouldn't be that surprised because it's just, it's not that amazing. You're getting what, 10% increased stats plus increased healing factor. Yes, I said the healing factor is nice, but it's not worth 690 gold heads. Though the rest of his skills, they are fairly equal in um, power. I'd say his second skill is the worst of all his skills. However, the march speed is really nice, and I do like that all damage, and even the attack is a high number. So if you are running out shaping, all his skills are worth gold heads, but his active skill and his third skill are definitely his most important skills, and I will try to get those as high as you can. With all commanders, you want to max your active skill. If you can get him a 5-1-5-1 one commander, he could work decently, but I don't think he's going to be that amazing. I'd prefer a 5-5-5-1, or even just, a five, uh, just an expertise version, actually. He'd be a good expertise. He'd be a good not-so-expertise commander, so he does seem very viable in that skill regard. Now, what are Hao Bing's best pairs? And Nevsky is on the screen for a reason. First of all, if you're running just a single target 1v1 type of march where you just want to decimate one person and make their day suck miserably, you run Hao Bing with Nevsky. It's going to deal ridiculous damage, and the only march besides infantry that it loses to, oddly enough, is Boudicca with Henry. I'm not sure why that wins, but from the simulator, that is what won. So what I'd expect is how chipping with Nevsky to be crazy good in some situations where you're just hitting the opponent and they're hitting you back, you're going to decimate people. Nevsky's already got a lot of increased skill damage. I forgot, yeah, here it is. 25% bonus, plus the extra skill damage that Hauchai Bing's bringing, plus Hauchai Bing's faster rage cycle. Nevsky's going to just go crazy. So Nevsky plus Hauchai Bing is definitely the best single target damage march in the whole entire game right now. Then also Hauchai Bing with Joan is an extremely good pairing. I've seen it and I've tested it in the ROK Battle Tester. We know this is going to be strong and slightly better than the Nevsky Joan by around 3,000 to 5,000 sev wounds. So Joan of Arc is another extremely good pair with Hao Che Bing. Now, if you don't have a Jonah and Nevsky, it's going to be a little bit hard to decide a secondary to Hao Che Bing. You could run Hao Che Bing with Justinian if you're running at least five open field marches. Also, if you have a Saladin or a Minamoto, they could work. Saladin being a very tanky secondary is not bad. And Mina being another very glass cannon high DPS commander could work. Similar to the Nevsky in terms of the damage, except it is a little bit less. Plus, he is nowhere near as tanky as Nevsky. And then William is probably the best option if you do not have a Nevsky or a Joan, because he brings a lot of debuffs, plus he has another 15% march speed, which you could bring to the field, which is really nice. So you can get out of sticky situations really easy. So which commander is the best for him out of all of those options? Probably Joan of Arc is coming in at rank one and Nevsky at rank two, then William at rank three. Joan is definitely the best with him because she performs best with him overall, especially in the open field situations. Nevsky is the best for 1v1s by far and away. However, if you're in the open field, you want to get AoE in there, Joan is your best bet. She's got 10% march speed. She may not be too tanky, but the march speed and her extremely high damage factor plus double skill trigger really does make up for it. And she works extremely well with Hao Bing. Like I said before, improving your trade by around two to 5,000 sev wounds compared to running her with a Nevsky. Now let's discuss the talents for Hao Che Bing. And to do that, I will switch over to ROKTalents.com. So here is the first Hao Che Bing skill tree. And this is the one that doesn't go and get Feral Nature and also does not get Clarity. What this does instead is it gives you Rallying Cry and also gives you Disarm. 
That is the only real difference between both builds. Other than that, they are fairly similar. But if you really, really like Growling Cry, which gives you the extra 15% all damage for the first 10 seconds of battle, which could actually be really good without chipping, since he will throw an active skill easily within the first 10 seconds. And also, you, you like actually reducing the enemy attack by 20% for 2 seconds, which will stack with an active skill reduction. Then you should go into this part of the tree. If you don't like that, then the other option is a tree like this, where you've gone all in on Feral Nature to get the extra Rage, which could make his Rage cycle about 1 to 2 seconds faster, especially during those middle turns. And then, the only thing you didn't get was, like I said, the Disarm and also the Rallying Cry. So, that is the real main difference between the builds, is depending on whether, you know, whether or not you want Feral Nature and Clarity, or if you want the Rallying Cry and the Disarm. Other than that, they are fairly similar builds, and I think that's really the only two builds you could run. Like, what variation could you do? You can't really go on Versatility Tree, Plus, the cap tree is fairly stock standard with good talents, and the skill tree doesn't take too many talent points. So, I think that this is probably the better build that I would run personally. But like I said, if you like Rally and Cry, then just go with the cap build that I offered before. Now, what equipment should you run on Haoche Bing? And since he's a little bit of a different commander, my usual recommendation of Ring and Horn may not be correct. While they will still work perfectly fine, especially the Ring itself, I'm still recommending that. The Horn, not so much. I feel like... The issue with having a horn is, especially if you go in the skill tree for Haoche Bing, he's already got enough rage. Like, overall, 850 rage to get to an active skill. Plus, you've got Rejuvenate. Plus, he's got Feral Nature. I just don't think he needs the horn. If you've gone for the Cavalry Tree, sure, go for the horn. It's going to be probably your best option. But, but if you've gone for the skill tree, then you probably just get either a Dagger or a Web. And if you're running multiple marches, you want to get the Web especially, so you can chase down other Cavs. Put a stacking march speed reduction on them, plus how Chapping's march speed reduction. You're going to have a really, really good march right there where you can just chase calves down, stop them from getting away, and just decimate them. Plus, always ring is a great thing to bring since, well, the increased all damage is just crazy. 15% increased all damage for two seconds can actually change a trade by a lot. So, I'd either recommend running a ring and horn if you are running the full cab talent tree, or if not, you run a ring with a web or a dagger, preferably a web to chase down those pesky calves. So overall, what is the final opinion on Haocha Bing? Is he a good investment? And I think that he is if you don't have a Nevsky. If you are just getting the Season of Conquest, I'd say you get him before you get Nevsky in some situations, especially me personally. I'd get Haocha Bing before I get Nevsky. Yes, Nevsky is still an absolutely amazing commander if you already have him. I think Haocha Bing just is not worth it. He's only like a three to 4,000 seven wound difference. Compared to Nevsky, yes, he can beat Zulang, but is he really that much better? Not really. Like what I've seen in reports and trades for the ROK Battle Simulator, he is at max 10% better for the full 690 gold heads. And Nevsky is still a decent commander. He still will be a good commander, and he works really well with John Prime as well. He is not going to lose his meta position at all. So I just think that if you are going to go for Hatcher Bing, you're either a whale or you're a free to play who really wants to run two cav marches, or you're a new person to Season of Conquest who wants to get their first cav march. That is when I'd recommend getting Haoche Bing. For most people in between who A, don't have a lot of gold heads and don't really need a second or third cav march, then you probably just skip Haoche Bing and just wait for the new infantry who I presume will be really, really powerful commanders since they are due for one. Or you go and invest in a different commander, for example, Zul Lang. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing to the Archer Syndicate YouTube channel. Every day, I try to push out a new, valuable, and interesting video that can help you get even just a small amount of value in Rise of Kingdom. So if you want to see more of my content, or you just want to support me as a creator, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching, I hope to see you in the next one.